In this video, let's talk about two totally different types of PFSense hardware custom built. The one on the top of the screen is a very popular choice. It's a mini PC without fan, zero noise, low power, good enough for PFSense. It has multiple gigabit NIC ports. That's exactly what we need for a PFSense. Bottom of the screen, that's a more standard when you recommend unit in my case is from supermicro it's more powerful noisy and it consumes more electricity let's look into the details this is the mini pc as you can see it's very industrial style uh, very sturdy very heavy no frills i really like the design of and the shape now let's look into the inside okay as you can see the sata ssd is simply attached to the bottom plate and here you see the inside the motherboard just one memory is inserted it, it does support the m sata ssd but i just installed the sata one that's good enough for a pf sense i don't want to furtherly take it apart uh, in the other side there's a cpu inside the pc there's a jumper which you may want to adjust so that when the pc lost its power and then if the power gets recovered it won't restart automatically Normally, it's not a big deal for a PC, but for a router or PFSense, you do want it to automatically start when you have the power restored, right? So then you need to adjust a jumper. It's very simple. Yep, that's the simple inside. This is the Super Micro server I just received from eBay. I purchased a used one, and I will put the model number on the screen. But if you search the model number on Supermicro website, you won't find it. Because in my understanding, this model was custom built by Supermicro for one particular company. After several years, the company decommissioned this type of machines. And that's why they were sold on eBay as used units. This is the back of the server. As you can see, there are totally eight RJ45 ports. The left two, they are for management purpose and they are only one gigabit. And the right six, they are the number one reason why I purchased this server. They are all 10 gigabits RJ45. It's very rare you can find a unit with so many built-in 10 gigabits ports, and especially they are all RJ45. This is the front of the server. It's a 1U unit, which is the number two reason why I purchased the unit, because I really need a rack mount server, even for a router for the PFSS server. It does come with four 3.5 hard drive trays as a PFSS server. I only need one, but it's good to have three as future expansion purpose. This is the power supply unit in the back. This server only has one PSU. It doesn't have redundant power supply, but for such a cheap, small, low-end server, I don't expect two PSUs at all. The Fun does give some noises, but not as loud as other bigger super micro servers. Under this big heat sink is a Intel Xeon E3 4 core CPU. It's not super powerful one, but it's enough for a PFSense server, and it's even overkill already. Whenever a home user talks about rack mount server, the fans and the noises are always a very important topic, especially for this server. It's a 1U unit. As you know, the smaller the fans, the higher noises or higher pitch is very annoying. But for this one, amazingly, it's not very loud at all. As you can see, for some reason, after the six placeholders for fans, only four were installed. I'm not sure whether 
is missing in the original build or for some reason it's missing when the seller sold it to me anyway it works fine on my rack the purpose of these two custom hardware boxes is to run pfsense so i list several major things in my opinion they are important when it comes to which type of hardware you want to choose to build your pfsense first let's talk about form factor on the screen you see three servers the middle one is the one we are talking about in this video the super micro and as you can see i just put the mini pc side by side with it so the mini pc is slightly thicker than the one you super micro but less than half the width in my opinion i really prefer a rack mount server so i like the super micro form factor very much but i know many people prefer mini pc then let's talk about the fans I know for many people, that's even the number one factor when they choose hardware for PFSense. If Mini PC doesn't have any fans, when it runs, it's dead quiet. So I'm using my iPhone in front of the Recommend Super Micro, and I already shut down the other two servers. So everything you hear now is from the PFSense Super Micro. So this is okay if you put it in a separate room, but of course you don't want to put it in your office. The noise level is much lower than the other 2U Supermicro or Dell servers, but it's still much louder than a normal PC. Let me move on to the back of the server because that's where the noises are coming from in the back there are totally five fans this one is for the psu it's not very loud then for the server itself it has four fans installed and that's what you can hear if my iphone is half from the server let me move to very close to the server yep that's the noise level you can expect Let's check the comparison results so far. So for the first one, the form factor, I personally like super micro, one U unit. For fans and the noises, the mini PC wins. The super micro has so many fans and a little bit noisy. Next, let's talk about the CPU. Now let's compare the CPU. In the left, you see the CPU for the mini PC. It's Intel i5. It has two cores. PFSense reports four CPU because each core has two hardware threads. And in the right, you see the super micro. It's Xeon, has four cores and PFSense report as 8 CPU. In day-to-day -day usage, if you don't do very heavy inter-VLAN routing, you should be fine, even if you have a super high-speed internet. So both CPU should work fine. But in my testing, if you do have very heavy inter-VLAN routing, even the Xeon CPU cannot support higher load already. So the CPU will keep running at 100% level. But for normal usage, you don't need to worry about the CPU at all. When it comes to memory, both computers have eight gigabytes memory. It's enough. So even in super high load, I only see maybe 50, 60% usage. And for both, I configured swap disk, but I've never seen it's used. So just the eight gig memory is enough. In fact, for the new super micro server, there was other options to have more memory, but I simply chose the lowest end one, which has only eight gigabytes memory because that's enough for a 
router. Let's summarize CPU and RAM comparison. For CPU, I give the score to Supermicro because it's more powerful. For memory, even though they both have 8 gigabytes memory, but the Supermicro one is a server, so it has ECC memory. We all know how important it is for a mission critical server. So Supermicro wins for memory. Power consumption is also a very important topic when it comes to this type of device which you want to use 24 by 7. The mini PC comes with a AC power adapter. From the picture you can tell the maximum output of the adapter is about 60 watt during real world using. I never seen the computer exceeds 15 watt power usage so it's very green. The power consumption for super micro is totally another story this is the remote management user interface for super micro this is for the power consumption section as you can see the average power consumption is about 100 or a little bit higher depending on the electricity price of your area it might mean dozens of US dollars per year it's not a small number now let's talk about the remote management we run PFSS on the computers. Normally, you want to write in a headless mode. You don't have keyboard, mouse, or display connected. In most cases, it's not a big deal because if PFSS runs fine, you can always log on using your browser from another computer. But in some situations, if you do not have physical access to the server, you are in trouble. For example, if for whatever configuration error, you cannot connect to the PFSS from your remote computer or PFSS gets stuck during the reboot process. The web interface hasn't been loaded yet and then it has problem. How do you troubleshoot? In fact, in the past years, I already encountered such situations several times. Every time it was a big hassle, I need to pull the monitors, mouse, keyboard to my server room and hook them up try to troubleshoot there. That's one major complaint from me to use this type of mini PC as the PFSS server. Of course, you can implement many different custom ways to make the remote management possible. But I mean, out of the box, the mini PC doesn't have the ability. Supermicro servers come with IPMI or Intelligent Platform Management Interface. From the picture, you can see the leftmost two parts. They are for IPMI usage. They are not visible to PFSense. Even your PFSense is not on yet. As long as your Supermicro server has power, you can use remote connection to connect to the web-based IPMI interface. This is the IPMI. There are a lot of functionalities. For example, you can monitor the temperatures and the fans power consumptions the most interesting feature to me is here the remote control functionality especially the HTML5 feature in the past you had to use let's say Java applet to run the remote control now you just need a browser because your browser support HTML5 and let me demo it for you it will launch another window and then here you go you have whatever displayed on your super micro server you will get the same thing as you connect a physical monitor to your server and you can use your local keyboard you can also use let's say virtual keyboard all the function keys are here now it's time to talk about price the mini pc when I bought it, it was about $350. Now it's about $400. It kept changing. And when it comes to the Super Micro, I couldn't believe my eyes when I first saw it on eBay. So it was sub $300. Even plus shipping, it's just a little bit over $300. I couldn't believe it until I receive the flawless unit. It's a great buy. If you want to furtherly upgrade the hardware, for the mini PC, yes, you may add new SSD or add more memories. 
but both won't bring you too much benefits if you just use PFSense. But for Supermicro, it has PCI slots, so you can expand the whatever abilities you want, storage, new network card, whatever you want to use with PCI card. So I would let Supermicro win for the expandability. In the end of the video, let's talk about the number one reason why I upgrade to the Supermicro. That's about the network ports. The mini PC come with 6 1 gigabit ports. They are enough for normal firewall usage. And if you have 1 gigabit or lower internet connection, it's enough for your internet purpose. But for me, I have several VLANs config configured in my home network and the routing of the VLANs need to go through the router. So I need faster connection between my router and my network switches. That's why I chose the 10 gigabit Supermicro. And the Supermicro has 6 10 gigabit RJ45, which is super good for a PFSense usage. I even aggregated five of them. So I have 50 gigabits connection to my switches. I use Unify switches in my network. This is the Unify controller for the particular switch which I connect to the PFSense router. As you can see, these five parts, they are showing as uplink and they are link aggregated and the total uplink I can show you here. See the uplink? it's 50 gigabits. I'm very happy with the switching from mini PC to Supermicro for my PFSense build. Thanks for watching.